Well, good afternoon, Richfield Church of Christ, and welcome to our Wednesday Bible class. I pray that you're doing well today, and I appreciate you for joining me in this class. Uh, I want to let you know that we are beginning a new series of class for Wednesdays, and so I hope that you'll find this beneficial. We just finished the book of Hebrews, and so if you uh, didn't see all of those, they are still all available on Facebook, on our Facebook page, and also on our YouTube channel. Uh, and so you can go and find those, and I, I hope that you are blessed by that study. Uh, in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to transition into a new series of studies uh, that I'm kind of jumping off of from Galatians 5. And in particular, I'm also going to be using a resource uh, to work through these uh, different ideas uh, from Galatians 5 about what is the fruit of the Spirit, or how do we cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives uh, that Paul talks about in Galatians 5. And so the book I'm reading, if, if you're interested in getting it and reading it kind of in parallel uh, to the classes we're going to be doing, uh, a lot of the content I'm going to be using will come from the book, but also with my own uh, take on these different uh, fruit of the Spirit. And so you might find that a useful resource uh, as we go through the class. Uh, but it's called Cultivating the Fruit of the Spirit, Growing in Christ-likeness by an author named Christopher Wright. And so what I want to do today is give you a quick and brief introduction. Some of this may sound familiar to you if you uh, watch the videos for our class on the book of Galatians that we did back in the spring of this year. Uh, but why is, why is it important that we grow in Christ-likeness? Uh, does it really matter whether or not Christians actually look like Christ? Well, I think the easy answer we would all give thinking about that is, yes, it does matter, is that if, if I'm claiming to be a Christian, in a sense, what I'm saying is I'm like Christ. I'm becoming a follower of Jesus, and I'm living according to his teachings. Now, you know, an important goal of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ and to be a follower of Jesus is that we are growing, and that we are people who are growing in spiritual depth, in maturity, in obedience to the teachings of Jesus, uh, that we want others to see his life in us as we go about our day. And perhaps so much of the modern struggle uh, in the last century, with there being growing numbers of people who are uh, walking away from faith or walking away from Christ, this has always been part of the reality, uh, is that not everybody remains faithful to Jesus. But in a number of cases, the reasons that are cited is that, that it troubles people when they see Christians who aren't very much like Christ. And I think there's there's reason to be bothered by that, because Scripture expects that if, if we become followers of Jesus, we will over time be shaped to become more and more like Christ. It doesn't mean it happens overnight. It doesn't mean that uh, we become perfect or sinless in this lifetime. But it does mean that, that as followers of Jesus, there is a progression that happens the longer we walk in the Spirit of God that we do become more like Christ and that this is God's desire for us to grow his fruit in us. Uh, there was a, a preacher and an author, a believer named John Stott. And one of the interesting things about his life uh, is that every morning uh, he would get up and he would pray this prayer. And I found this prayer when I first read it and read that he prayed it. Uh, a few years ago, I, I just wrote it out in my journal and I said, I'm going to make this a part of my prayer life in different seasons. And so there have been uh, seasons where I've tried to pray this prayer on a daily basis. And here's the prayer, uh, and I'll put it in the comments so that if you want to use it as a daily prayer, you can uh, put it into practice in your own life. He said in his prayer, Heavenly Father, I pray that this day I may live in your presence and please you more and more. Lord Jesus, I pray that this day I may take up my cross and follow you. Holy Spirit, I pray that this day you will fill me with yourself and cause your fruit to ripen in my life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's a beautiful prayer, and it's a daily reminder of what it is that God is trying to do in us. And so the Spirit of God does work in followers of Jesus to help us become more like him. Jesus was filled with the Spirit of God and, and it empowered him and guided him in his ministry 
and clearly we can see the fruit of the Spirit in the life of Christ. Uh, and what we want to know is, even Paul himself talked about that this is the goal for Christian life, that we would be conformed to the image of Christ. So in Galatians, we're going to spend some time in Galatians here in a minute, he says about these Christians, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. He felt like a mother to these Christians and his uh, pains, his desire was to see that Christ would be formed in them. At other points in Romans 8, 28 and 29, Paul talks about part of the will of God uh, from before time began was that those who were in Christ, those who would become followers of Jesus, would be conformed to the image of his son. He talks about this in 2 Corinthians 3 as well, about the ministry of the Spirit in helping us become more and more, uh, have the image of Christ in us. Uh, in 1 John 3, 2, the Apostle John writes, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when, we, when he appears, talking about Jesus, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And then Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And so there is this uh, over and over again, Emphasis on the reality that being a Christian means that we will become more and more like the Christ we follow. And so how is it that God does that? Well, what we're going to learn in Galatians, and as we walk through the spirit, uh, fruit of the Spirit over the next probably eight weeks after this class, uh, it won't be a long class, as we walk through these different fruit of the Spirit, we see that what we are doing is we are becoming like Jesus. We are becoming what we were intended to be as human beings as the fruit grows in our lives. So the context for Galatians 5 where we read about the fruit of the Spirit is that Paul had been sent uh, by the church in Antioch to go and share the good news or the gospel of Jesus among Jews and Gentiles uh, in the regions of Asia Minor, what we would know as modern-day Turkey. And as he had gone, you can read about the story in Acts 13 and 14. In the region of Galatia, he had gone, he had shared the gospel of Jesus, uh, and made disciples, and formed new churches uh, in this region. A number of these people were primarily uh, Gentile believers who had heard uh, God, what God had promised to do through Abraham for the peoples of every tribe and nation. And Paul very likely told them this, is that God had promised Abraham that through him and his descendants, all peoples or all nations on earth would be blessed. And this is the reality that has come in Jesus Christ, is that whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, no matter who you are, no matter what your ethnic background is, when you uh, put your trust into Jesus the Messiah and you enter into a covenant relationship with him through your baptism, uh, you are clothed with Christ, and you become a part of the people of God, and you inherit all the promises of God uh, made to Abraham and to his children. And they did this not by becoming Jews ethnically uh, or culturally or by keeping the old covenant law, but simply by becoming adopted children of God, brought into his family through his grace and through their trust in Jesus the Messiah. Uh, we can read about this reality in Galatians. So let's go to Galatians and just read briefly some of the things that Paul says there to these Christians. Uh, Galatians 3, 7 through 9, Know then that is that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. And then let's go later uh, to in the same chapter, verse chapter 3, Verse 23, Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. And so what Paul is telling them is that if you have followed Jesus, if you've been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. And it doesn't matter uh, in terms of whether you're a man or a woman, uh, whether you're a Jew or Gentile, slave or a free person. It doesn't matter. Uh, anyone can inherit the promises of God as they put in their trust in Christ and follow after Jesus. Now, why was this a big issue? It was because 
Paul's having to remind them of all these things because there are these Jewish Christians who are coming and teaching a false gospel to the Galatian believers who are telling them that in order to be right with God, it is not enough to follow Jesus and to trust in him and to live according to his teaching. You also must keep the old covenant law. And so what they were trying to enforce on believers was circumcision, uh, food laws, Sabbath laws, and other things that made Jews ethnically distinct and different. And Paul says this is a false gospel, um, that these things are unnecessary uh, for believers in Christ Jesus. Whether they be Jew or Gentile, these things are no longer required to be right with God. And so, instead, these Christians are called to live in freedom, serving God with Christ living in them and walking by the Spirit. They're not to be enslaved under the Old Covenant, and they're not to be enslaved by their sinful desires. And so this is not freedom to rebel against God and His will. This is a freedom to serve God uh, faithfully as they walk with the Spirit. And so he says things like, what matters is faith expressing itself through love, uh, or faith and love that are concerned with doing what is best for our neighbors, loving them. And so he is speaking both against legalism and against license for trying to live against against any kind of law. So legalism says, if I keep all the rules, I will be right with God. License says, if I reject any rules, uh, I will still be okay. And both of these things are wrong for the Christian. And so what is it that we're called to instead? We are called to a freedom that is not uh, indulging in sinful desires, but a freedom of walking in step with the Spirit. So let's go to Galatians 5 and read there uh, some sections of this passage. Galatians 5, verse 1, Paul says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And then in verse 6 he says these words, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. And then verse uh, 13 of the same chapter, Paul says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, Serve one another, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so Paul is saying um, there's a different way we walk as Christians, right? We experience freedom, and we walk in step with the Spirit. And so he, he begins to talk about, uh, in verses 19 through 21, or actually let's go to verse 16 through 18 and uh, read what he says about the Spirit. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And so, uh, what is it that we are to be ruled by, or led by, or guided by? Uh, Paul says that it is to be the Spirit, not the flesh, not our sinful, selfish desires, but the Spirit of God working in us. So he uses phrases like, walk by the Spirit. We're to be a people who are led by the Spirit. Uh, we're to live by the Spirit, to keep in step with the Spirit. And in contrast, he says, this is what it means to live in the flesh, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warned you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so without going into depth on any of those things, he says this is what it looks like to live selfishly and sinfully, to give in to our desires and to live in a way that is opposed to the work of God in our life. And so these kind of sins will disrupt uh, our relationship with God, our relationship with other people, and ultimately these things, if we continue to live in them, will keep us from inheriting the kingdom of God. And so he said, if we're to live according to the Spirit, in contrast, these are the things that we see in our lives when we begin to live according to the Spirit. So let's read verses 21 to 23, or 22 to 24, excuse me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. And so, uh, all of this fruit, and the word is in the singular, this fruit of the Spirit, these things grow together in our lives as the Spirit is working in us. 
And so what we're going to do over the next several weeks is we're going to take each individual word uh, and talk about this aspect of the fruit of the Spirit and how it is that we can cooperate with God's work in us and allow this fruit to grow in our lives. And so how is it that a tree will grow fruit? Um, what, what is it that makes a tree or a plant bear fruit? Well, we know it's because there is life at work within it, rising up from the soil and the water that feeds its roots, flowing through every branch and tree. And because of this life at work within within a tree or a plant, uh, it will bear fruit as long as it has all these right conditions at work in it. And so in the same way, we as Christians, if we have the Spirit, the life of God at work in us, uh, it will happen. The fruit of the Spirit will grow in us, and it will produce a different changed life in us uh, as we have the Spirit working in us. And so we are people who are growing in character, growing in Christ-likeness as time goes on. And now, you know, we can, we can choose to cultivate the fruit. We can choose to participate in the Spirit's work in us. Um, we can do this, you know, when you want to see a tree grow in fruitfulness. Maybe you make sure it has the right water that it needs, that it's watered, that it's fertilized, that it's in a good place where it will receive the right amount of sun it needs. Um, and all of these things happen together, and it produces fruit. In our own Christian life, uh, it's God's work in us, right? It's God's Spirit that is working to make us grow and to make us what God wants us to be. But we can cooperate with the Spirit and how it's working in us. We can feed on the Word of God. We can spend time in prayer. Uh, we can give our lives and give the Spirit the right conditions under which to work to grow fruit in us. And what we need to remember as we go through this uh, next few weeks of study about the fruit of the Spirit is that, that growth takes time. That's why there are this, these agricultural metaphors is that it's not quick, it's not easy. Um, at times, we can get frustrated with ourselves because we believe it should be simple or it should be quick uh, or it shouldn't be hard. But the reality is, is if you've been a Christian for very long, you know this process takes time and patience. What we know is that the Spirit will grow fruit in us. It will happen. And hopefully you can look back on your life and even though it may feel slow, you can hopefully see I'm more like Jesus today uh, than I was 10 years ago or however long ago you became a Christian. It takes time. And all of this fruit, it grows together. It's not like you focus on one and, and work on it and it'll grow more than the others. It's no, this is, all these things go together in the life of a Christian and they grow together. It requires cultivation. We've already talked about that a little bit. And we can choose to set our thinking and our intentions on participating in the Spirit's work. And that's what I hope we'll do over the next few weeks is not only learn about uh, this this fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Not that we'll just learn what these things mean, but also thinking about how can we how can we live it out? What do these words mean? And how do we practice them and allow the Spirit to work in us? Well, thanks for being here. I know that for some of you, this material uh, may feel like a review. Reviews are helpful for me because I so quickly forget. And over the next few weeks, I hope that you'll be blessed as we learn about the fruit of the Spirit. As we close our class, let's just uh, take a minute and pray this prayer that we talked about at the beginning of class together. And I hope that you will pray it with me. Heavenly Father, I pray that this day I may live in your presence and please you more and more. Lord Jesus, I pray that this day I may take up my cross and follow you. Holy Spirit, I pray that this day you may fill me with yourself and cause your fruit to ripen in my life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you're blessed by our class today. Uh, if you want to take a minute, you can discuss a question uh, or two. One is, how have you seen the fruit of the Spirit grow in your life? And uh, also, where do you see yourself struggling uh, in the fruit growing in your life? Thanks for taking time to be with me. God bless you. Have a great day.